Hey, it's T Styles. I help writers build their book businesses through story structure, marketing, and publishing. So if that interests you, please like, subscribe, and share. And do me an even bigger favor, put an emoji right now into my comments so that I know that you see me, so that I know that you want more of this content. I really want to help you to go create and be great. So we're going to get started with four ways, and these are going to be creative ways to get your book noticed, okay? Number one, create a bookmark with a QR code. Now, you've seen those QR codes now. I'm... The pandemic hit us hard. I mean, I don't really like a lot of pandemic talk on my channel, but I have to say this. The pandemic hit us hard. And at the same time, it gave us a reminder about inventions that we had before that we weren't really using. So the QR code is something that a lot of restaurants use because they didn't want to have like the hands-on with like the the uh, menus and things like that that could carry germs and all of those things. And so it got people comfortable using the QR codes. So cue in you and your book. Imagine creating a really quick bookmark, a really cute bookmark rather, and then having your QR code on it. When a reader scans that QR code, it goes directly to your website. Why did I bring up the restaurant? It's because people are used to it more than now than ever. They've always been around, but we weren't really using them. So that is one creative way. And as a matter of fact, let me show you how to do that really quickly. Put it in the video. Show you how to create a bookmark that will also host your QR code. So when you go into Canva, and I'm gonna always say Canva everything because I love Canva. I'm gonna grab one of these blank bookmarks. So you see this bookmark, it has some things on it. It's a little bit too immature for an adult. Matter of fact, let me change it up because I want to make sure this is right. Let me do one chapter at a time. And all of this is automatically available inside of Canva. The first thing I would do is T Styles bookmark. And I like to make sure I name my particular projects so that when I download them, that they'll be available. So then I'm going to go over here after I make all of the changes I want, color, you know, background, all of that. Then I'm going to come over here to where it says QR code. I'm going to put in my website that I want. So I'm going to put www.toystyles.com, hit generate code, and then boom. This will go directly to my website. And then when I hit share, download, create PDF, then I'm able to do a few things with this bookmark. Number one, I can go to places like vistaprint.com or certain other companies allow you to do bookmarks. That's your choice, but that's how you do it. Hope that's been helpful. Let's get back to the video. Another way to get your book noticed is by focusing on your very first week of sales. Look, I heard about this. I forget who it was. This was a time, some time back from a New York Times bestselling author. And he went on to tell us that one of the ways that he got his book on the New York Times bestsellers list was by pre-selling his book years and sometimes months in advance, right? So he had his book available for pre-sale like months and months before the actual release date. And what made this magic is what most writers or authors don't know is that, that when you release a book, you can get on the bestsellers list based off of your pre-sales. So let's say you've taken advantage of having your book available for months or if you're using the KDP time, you know that it's limited. But all of those pre-sales count as your very first one-day sales release when that book drops. And although we know as writers that best-selling lists are not always a good determining factor of how well a book or how good a book is, Q and reviews when you can really get a good good idea. It still helps readers make informed decisions because readers want to make sure that they aren't wasting their time. So when they see a bestsellers list or a tag specifically for Amazon because you've done the work, you've pumped those pre-sales and now your book has dropped and they see bestsellers list, then it'll tell them, look, maybe there's something to be said about this book. Maybe if I buy this book, you know, I'm not going to waste any of my time. I'm not going to lie. I'm a big re 
person or reviewer, a review hunter when I'm going to an establishment like a hotel or something. I look at the reviews to see, you know, what kind of place this is before I waste my time. I don't have a lot of time. I'm very busy. I'm in charge of the Elite Writer Squad. I'm married. I got, you know, family, friends, you know, it's so many things that I'm doing. So I don't want my time wasted. And I am 100% sure that this bestsellers tag is also a way for people to know, you know what? If I read this book, if everybody else is reading it, it may be an enjoyable thing. So that is one way to get your book noticed. Another way is to run contests. Let me tell you, if you are running contests, people who are interested in this contest while you're running it, they know the chances of them actually being a winner are low. But there's something to be said about the possibility of winning. I mean, how many times back in the day did you buy raffle tickets that you knew you probably wasn't going to win? But just the idea of maybe it being my lucky day or the lottery, you know, literally the lottery. I have am somebody who tends to go and play the mega this, that, and the third when the numbers are really ma major, hoping that, okay, if I win $400 million, what I'm going to do with it? So your contest may be a little bit different or actually a lot different, but at the same time, what it does when you run contests for free books, free t-shirts, uh, free gift sets, whatever that you may be doing, what it does is it creates activity. And where is the activity is? Around you. Several times I have run contests on my Facebook page and I've said, okay, I'm going to give away X amount of planners or X amount of books. I'll have people that say, look, I know I ain't going to win. Where's the link I want to buy anyway? So running contests, it may be old, but it's new in terms of getting attention your way. Try it and let me know what you think. Number four, I don't even know if I've been counting these, but hopefully you guys have. Another way is to create themes around your book release and an excellent theme to create for your book release party online or in person because you can do that now people are coming out more now than ever and meeting each other is to make it around food so you could do maybe a wine book release you know so t styles war saga wine wine book signing party or t styles the war saga pizza party and when you when you do these parties, so this is very important. When you do these parties, you want to make sure that you aren't just having people just eating. You want to make sure that you play hostess. So before or in between, while you're giving information about your book, because you always want to make sure that you are talking about your book, that you ask people, what are you eating? And see what their comments are. Shout out people who are showing you love. One, We tend to sometimes get so caught up into, let me get this video done, let me get this live done, that we aren't having enough fun, right? So pause and ask people, hey, what you doing over there? What you eating? Oh, I'm eating a Hawaiian pizza. Yes, I love myself pepperoni, uh, uh, let me see, pineapple, green pepper, and onions on my pizza. So ask people what they're eating. Ask them how they're feeling. Ask them where they got their food from. Engage, build a tribe, and you will be surprised at how much this helps get your book noticed. I hope this helps. Again, if you like this and more content, please like, subscribe, and share, and then give me emoji. Let me know you hear me. Let me know you want more of it. I'll be back soon. Bye.